So we had just been talking about how to find these vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So we're going to now apply that to some specific rational functions and uh, also find their zeros. So here's the first couple. And those functions might look familiar because we've already looked at them before. So let me just point out what you always want to do. First step, factor. You want to factor both the top and the bottom. Top and bottom. Okay, uh, there we go. So um, let's see, f of x is equal to, and I think this was something like this, a 3x and a 5 and a 3x and a 2, and I needed a negative 15 positive, yeah, it was like that. Okay, and if I wanted to, I could factor the bottom as well, so I could factor out a 2 and make that, hurt, mistake, x plus 4. Okay, so where do I get my vertical asymptotes from? I get my vertical asymptotes from where the denominator is equal to zero. What number makes the bottom equal to zero? Negative four. So I have a vertical asymptote at an x equals negative four. Remember, that's the number that I took out of the domain. Whatever those numbers that you take out of the domain, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a vertical asymptote there, okay? Horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, we have to see which rule applies. So let's look. I've got an x squared on top and an x to the first power on the bottom. Top is bigger than the bottom, so the top's getting bigger, 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 faster as the, as the bottom's not, so this means that we don't have one at all, so none. All right, let's see. Now I also need to find the zeros. Where are the zeros? Well, zero comes from when the whole function is x values, the x values that make the function equal to zero. So let me do this. Let me switch colors on you. Right? Make it blue, maybe. And um, also pop out the eraser. Let me take this out and put a zero in its place. There we go. Now, if I'm going to solve this thing for zero, what I could do is just multiply both sides by the common denominator. Or treat this as a proportion and multiply um, 1 times the top and the bottom times 0. Do you see where this is going? Where this is going is the denominator makes absolutely no difference when it comes to the zeros. I get the zeros only where the top is equal to 0. So what numbers make the top equal to 0? x is equal to, so we've got from the first one, 5 thirds, 0, and we have another x-intercept, or 0, at negative 2 thirds, 0. And I know this wasn't on there, but um, let's go ahead and find the y-intercept. I get a y-intercept by plugging in 0 for x. So everything's going to disappear, 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 and you're always left with the ratio of the constant terms. Negative 10 divided by 8, divide them both by 2, and your y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 5 fourths? Yes. Okay. Let's try the same thing over here. So remember, got a factor. Well, we already have it factored. Same factors as we had over there, and so this time it's 2 times x plus 4 on the top and on the bottom, 3x minus 5, and 3x plus 2. Where do I get my vertical asymptotes? From where the denominator is equal to 0. The denominator is equal to 0 at 5 thirds and negative two-thirds. Look, that switched with the x-intercepts over there, of course, because I just flipped my equation over. Reciprocal. All right, horizontal asymptote this time. So before I had none. Now I have the highest power on the top is one, the denominator's highest power is two, so the denominator's bigger than the top. The denominator's getting bigger faster than the top, 
I must be approaching zero. So it's y equals zero. Mm -hmm. And now, just like I did before, this gets blue, set this thing equal to zero, and really I could care less about the bottom to find the x-intercepts, I just need to know where the top is equal to zero. So that one is just the point negative four zero. Okay, this time, where's the y-intercept? Plug in zero everywhere there's an x, and it's just the ratio of the constant terms, this time a negative four-thirds. So zero, negative four-fifths, fifths. There we go. All right, are you ready to try this on your own? Of course you are. Here are two of them for you to do. Did the same thing I did before, I just took the function, just flipped them over, so really you only have to factor once, but that is the first step. Go ahead and factor, and then find your vertical and your horizontal asymptotes, find your x-intercepts, and then why not, just because, why don't you go ahead and find the y-intercepts. Okay, so let's check those answers, huh? How about this? So, uh, over our I noticed, of course, that these are, are basically the same thing, so I had to factor up the top, and so up at the top, I noticed there was a common factor of 3, so I just pulled it out, factored the trinomial that was left over. The 3's do cancel, because whenever you pull out the GCF at the bottom, you get 3x, so 3's cancel. All right, so my vertical asymptotes, x equals 0 and 7, because I get a 0 from this x by itself and 7 from the first set of uh, the second set of parentheses. Okay, and then my horizontal asymptote is at 2. The degrees are the same, top and bottom, so it's 6 divided by 3. It's the leading coefficient ratio. X-intercepts come from where just the top is equal to 0, so I get negative 5 halves from the first set of parentheses and then 1 from the second one. And then you don't have a y-intercept. Anytime you have, yeah, pain right here. Anytime you have zero for an x, or for a vertical asymptote, you can never have. Um, Daddy, we need help. Okay, just a minute. Okay, let me finish up. I'll be with you in a second. Um, you you can never have a y-axis because you can't touch the y-axis. You'd be dividing by zero. Okay, so. Over here on the other side, this time, uh, switching these things over, factoring exactly the same time, uh, same way, but my x-intercepts are where my zeros were before, so negative 5 halves and 1, and my horizontal is at... Well, go, go get them, Rowan. Go get them quick. I will help you in just a minute. Go get them. Plants versus zombies. Anyway, um, so... Uh, y equals a half is a horizontal asymptote because the degrees are the same. This is 3 divided by 6. And then where the top is equal to 0, I get 0, 0 and 7, 0. And then finally, if 0, 0 is an x-intercept, the y-intercept is also the origin. All right, so let's give a, a couple more of these things a try. And we're going to do these things together because something special is going to happen. And I want you to see it. Okay. All together now, what's the first step? Factor. Let's factor the top, let's factor the bottom. So across the top here, open up two set of parentheses, a 2x and an x. I need 15 and 7, how about a 5 here, a 3 there, negative 10, positive 3. That looks like that will work. Down across the bottom, do the same kind of thing. A 2x and an x. And this time I need negative 12, so how about 3 and 4? Try a 3 here and a 4 there. I have 8 and 3. That would work as long as this is minus and this is plus. Uh, whoa, would you look at that? This factor cancels out with that factor. And I'm just left with the function x minus 5 over x minus 4. I will. You just got to give me a minute, okay? Vertical asymptote where the uh, bottom is equal to zero, so x is equal to four. And um, what about the other one? What about this other one that canceled out? Well, it will cancel out everywhere whenever it's something like six divided by six or seven divided by uh, seven. 
But what if it was 0 over 0? It's still a number that we have to take out of the domain, but it's not a vertical asymptote. This is a hole. It gets a hole at x equals, subtract 3 divided by 2, negative 3 halves. We get a hole instead of a vertical asymptote, a point of discontinuity. Where's the horizontal asymptote? Horizontal asymptote, since the ratio are the, uh, the degrees are the same, it's a ratio of the leading coefficients, 2 divided by 2, y is equal to 1 x-intercept, where's the top equal to 0? It is at just 5, so 5 comma 0. And I don't have 1 for negative 3 halves because it canceled out with the bottom and there's a hole in the graph there. It doesn't touch the x-axis. Okay, and where is the y-intercept? Cancel, 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 cancel. When you put in 0, it's negative 15 divided by negative 12, so it's going to be positive divided by um, let's see, 3 would be 5 fourths. So, 0, 5 fourths. I believe, hmm, that's what I've got right there. Okay, um, why don't you give the second one a try? I'm going to go check out, see what Roman's doing with uh, Plants vs. Zombies, because he's needing my help a second ago. Alright, pause it, and come back and check your work. All right, I just bought myself a couple of more minutes setting him up with a new game because the zombies ate all his stuff. Okay, um, whoops, wrong direction. Uh, there we go. There are your answers. Maybe you got these right. Here you have another hole. So you factor the top, you factor the bottom, and the factor of x plus 3 cancels in the top and the bottom. So uh, remember that creates a hole, a point of discontinuity. Uh, I still have a vertical asymptote at 0 from that x squared. Um, and let's see, horizontal asymptote is 0 because I have the denominator's degree is bigger than the top. It's getting bigger faster than the top. x-intercept, just the one parenthesis that's left over on the top, it's 2, 0. And then you don't have a y-intercept, of course, because x equals 0, the y-intercept is a vertical asymptote. So let me show you, let's put those pieces all together, give you a sneak peek of some of the things that you're going to be doing next lesson. Putting all these things together and graphing it. And we'll look at it with vertical, horizontal asymptotes, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and the a-holes. So here's the first one over there on the left. There's its little hyperbola. It's vertical and horizontal asymptotes and I have a 0 at 5 is what I saw before and over here I have a hole and that hole was at what was it uh, negative negative 3 halves that's what it was negative 3 halves okay there we go and um, let's take a look at the next one all right, uh, there's the hyperbola. Look at this time it's going, going down like that. I have an x-intercept, a 0 right there at 2. The whole of the graph at 1, 2, 3, at negative 3. Horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote. Look at this one. This time, um, um, both of them are going down on either side of that vertical asymptote. Sometimes that happens. Aren't those graphs cool? And that's something to look forward to, something to get excited about in the next lesson. Uh, I hope that you agree. Okay, so whenever I go to factor these things before finding the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes and the zeros, if a factor cancels, there is no vertical asymptote for that factor. Okay, instead I have a hole in the graph and I don't have a zero either. Okay, so those are two important things to remember whenever you have a canceled factor and remember this whole technical word for it is or terminology point of discontinuity. Point of discontinuity. Okay, so that concludes our lesson on graphing rational functions. 
didn't really graph any, but we did find the domain, talked about why you can't divide by zero, and found some vertical horizontal asymptotes and some zeros. So see if you get this reference over here. Found this picture on the, asym on the asymptote on the internet. You can't touch this because he's an asymptote. That's MC Hammer. I would, um, of course, put the music in the background, but I don't want to be sued for using someone's licensed music. So just kind of hum to yourself something like this. Is that how it goes? Can't touch this. Okay, so uh, here's your assignment. Bring those worksheets. Now, some of you in the past won't print these things off. At least print out that first one, the one that I made for you, okay? Print that thing off because I give you some nice space to work on it. And uh, yeah, bring it to class next time.